a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. This is part 95. Fitting the handrails to the superstructure, connecting the balancing pipe and water pump feed, removing the masking tape and some painting near the end of the video. First of all, I'll start the episode with a problem. One of the handrail stanchions was broken, and luckily I found a new one in my box of old handrail stanchions. In fact, a whole packet of handrail stanchions. Which is just as well, because these handrail stanchions are different to the original ones, which means I need to replace all of them. I loctited each stanchion onto the handrail, and here I'm fitting them to the superstructure. I need to do exactly the same to the handrail stanchions at the other side. Originally mounted on the front of the cab, Great Western Railway style, were these pair of dummy whistles. In this clip I've cleaned up the first one using the polishing spindle and it's shining nicely. The bracket needs a bit of attention though. As I was sanding the mounting plate ready for another coat of paint, I decided after a while not to proceed with this method. Instead I'm going to remove the paint. In this clip you can see that I've polished up the other whistle, so when these are mounted back onto this plate, when it's painted properly, this should look good. I need to remove the paint off several parts for this engine, so I'm just going to drop them into a pot of gun wash. Gun wash is cellulose thinner, so it's very important not to use polystyrene containers. This of course is an aerosol cap. I'll leave the parts in the gun wash and get on with something else. This is the balancing pipe arrangement. The T piece in the middle is to allow a water feed to the axle driven pump, and this pushes onto a piece of copper pipe that's connected to the inlet to the pump. Even though it doesn't really need it, I've used some cable ties to secure the silicone rubber to the fittings. This is not a very good arrangement, even the pipes don't line up with each other, but all I'm doing is replacing what was there in the first place. The time has come to remove the masking tape. And really, being wise after the event, I didn't use enough masking tape. I never do. Masking and painting really is not my forte. In this part of the clip, I'm removing some overspray using a cloth with a bit of gun wash on it. The last thing you want on a model steam locomotive is a green water gauge glass. The turret has fared a little bit better. The only significant overspray in this area is on the nuts of the fittings. I don't need to use these nuts and union cones anyway, so here I'm removing them. There is a small amount of overspray at the bottom of the siphon, but that will clean off very easily. I didn't bother masking off the regulator itself because I'm going to paint it, but I did mask the nice brass bit around the regulator. This is such a good looking part on the back head, I didn't want to get any paint on it. I suppose really I could have painted the inner steam dome. But I didn't, I masked it off, and here it is with the masking removed. I was quite thorough when I masked the front part of the boiler, and here I'm removing it all. As you can see, apart from the overspray on the superheater, everything's fine. I even masked the brass nut, which fixes the superheater to the main steam pipe. And this is the last bit of masking that needs removing. The good news is, in the time it took to remove the masking tape, the paint has fallen off all the metal parts that are put in the gun wash. I think this is still my favourite method of paint removal. If the paint doesn't come off in the gun wash, then that's not a bad thing because it means it's really stuck to the metal, but all of this paint just fell off. And I removed any small flecks of paint that were left over using a wire brush in one of my Proxon motor tools. These two parts are the tank filler caps. And the construction is really puzzling. They're actually made from aluminium with the brass centre part stuck to the aluminium with what appears to be epoxy resin. Here I'm removing it. Once again, I'm seeing more than one person's workmanship on the same engine. The good thing about this engine though is the main parts are quite well made. Well, most of them anyway. This paint was quite well stuck to the part. It's the hatch that fits on the side tank over the water pump, and because the side tanks get quite hot, owing to the proximity of the boiler, this paint was quite well baked on. But thanks to the wire brush in the Proxon motor tool, it soon disappeared. To finish this job, I fitted a wire brush into the bench mounted Proxon, and with this I can get right into the corners to remove every speck of paint. Eventually I end up with a kit of parts ready to be repainted. 
Apart from using the wire brush, I've also scratched up the surfaces of these pieces of metal to provide a good key for the paint. To start the painting process, I'm going to use the etching primer that I always use, which is not really designed for these metals, but it works very well. Thanks to a comment from a viewer saying, why don't you use your turntable for painting? I use it for painting now, thank you very much, dear viewer. And I usually do it like this. I put a plastic box upside down on the turntable, and that way I can turn the parts around and give them a really even coat. And as always, here is a shot of the paint drying. Before applying the top coat, I need to wait 24 hours for the etching primer to thoroughly cure. So it's back into the inside of the workshop to repaint the boiler backhead. The overspray, as you can see, has really gone everywhere. Note to self, try and make a better job of masking in future. In actual fact, I was going to give the backhead another coat of paint anyway, so nothing's been wasted. I also need to carefully paint around the edge of the boiler wrapper to cover the heat insulation material. I'm trying really hard not to touch any of the other parts with the paintbrush, but the odd spot is inevitable. I will remove this when the paint's dry. Time now to touch in the paint on the taps on the turret. This paintwork is very easily damaged, but a quick coat of this HMG paint satin black should do the trick. In this part of the clip, I'm just applying some satin black paint to the regulator handle. The finish on the handle is quite rough, and this provides a very good key for the paint. Thinking about it though, whichever colour you paint your regulator handle, some of the paint will always wear away. And there you have it. Once the paint's dried, the boiler is ready to go into the frames, and this is going to be difficult. You'll see why when I show you how I do it. The superstructure is just sat in place, I need to remove it to change the handrails so they match the ones at the other side, as well as fitting the numbers and some little badges, not forgetting the two Great Western transfers that I bought for the sides of the tanks. If any train spotters are watching, I'd better mention that I've selected the yellow transfers, not the gold ones, because the gold transfers were for passenger locomotives, and the yellow letters were for mixed traffic locomotives. That's what the man at Phoenix Precision Paints where I bought the transfers from told me. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.